Hi folks, in this video we're going to look at how you can create a progress bar chart using the sparkline function in Google Sheets. So picking up from where we left off on the last video, we looked at how you could create the bar chart using the repeat and chart function. The, the results look very similar with the sparkline, um, but I do think they are a little bit cleaner and they do allow a bit more flexibility. So this is a great way to get stuck into sparkline functions in general because you'll get the gist of how they work. Out of the two methods, I do prefer the sparkline because, as I say, they, they do create a variety of different options that you can use. So just as we did before with the um, repeat and char function, we're going to use this sort of data over here just to denote, you know, the number of tasks or, you know, um, whatever rating you're using to get the, the sort of bar chart working just as a placeholder for now. But obviously you can use your numbers from your sheets however you wish. So let's begin and type out our task here for to say that we've, we've done two tasks and we'll start with typing out the sparkline function in Google Sheets. So it asks us for the data to start off with and we're going to use this as our data here. So we'll select that as the data and add a comma. And the options, the options if we look here, you can see there are various options available to you in Sparklines, but we're going to just look at these basic ones to start off with, because this is really all you need to create something like this. You can see that everything is enclosed in these curly braces here. So this is the, the options part of the function. And so they come as pairs. So you'll have, this is one value pair. So the chart type is a bar chart. There's a max option in which case, in this case, we're showing 50 as the max. So we're going to do something very similar to this. So let's start by opening the curly braces and we need to do the double quotes for the value pairs here. So we're going to type out chart type, close the double quotes. And then in order to separate these, we need to use a comma between the two value pairs. And you'll notice that there's a semicolon that separates each option respectively. So we'll put a comma here and then we're going to specify what type of chart we want. In this case, we're going for a bar chart. So we close the double quotes and then we're going to add our semicolon. And then we do the second option, which is in this case, max. Double quotes again with a comma. And then we're going to specify in our case, Similar to what we did last time with the char and repeat, we're going to use a maximum of 10 tasks. So we'll just say 10 in here. Then we can close our curly braces and close the parentheses on that and hit enter. And there you go, we can see that we've got something that specifies two in this cell here. So if we were to change that to five, you can see it's filling up half of that cell space here. That is kind of the, the quickest and easiest way to get a bar chart. Um, a progress bar chart with spark lines, just using the, the out of the box sort of setup that you can see there. Just as a note with the options, they're all considered as conditions that should be placed with inside the curly braces. Each individual option will be enclosed in the double quotes. Okay, just as we mentioned here. So this is an option and this is an option here and this becomes the value pair. If you're using numbers or Boolean values like true or false, you don't actually need to use the quotes. You can see here with the 10, we just put that, that number in because that's a number. We don't need the, the double quotes for numbers or true or false. And so you can have you know multiple um, options and associated value pairs within the function. We've only covered that sort of two here really, um, but there are quite a few options and we'll go over that in a separate video um, just for spark lines because I think it's quite a powerful function. Um, and it's really quite neat to include in your spreadsheet. Okay, so out of the box, you know, you get this default color, but what if we want to change that? You can actually use words for the colors. So for example, in here, rather than um, just using the standard, we can add another semicolon here, and then we can specify color. And we need to spell that the American way. And we'll say color one, but in this case, there is only one color. We add our comma, oh, double quotes, comma, and then we can just put in here, for example, green. And if we do that, we get a green bar here. And of course you could change this to whatever color you want, blue for example. But if you know the hex value um, for the color code you're looking for, you can use that as well. So for example, 
in here we can just type in something like a code like this and that will give us this green that we've got over here so again looking at the function you can see our first value pair is the chart type and bar the second separated by the semicolon is specifying the maximum number of elements within the bar chart in this case there's 10 and we have a two over here which specify oh, so we, we change that to five so it's going to go halfway across and then we specify the color as the third value pair and color one has this hex value assigned to it so the downside to the sparkline function compared to the the char and repeat is that you can't easily do the two colors unless you have two sets of numbers like this but once you've got the two numbers like this then setting up a second color is, is straightforward so let's just copy this down just so you can see what that looks like here so we're going to change this range rather than it just specifying just this one cell here let's select these two over here so we choose the range as in this one and this one so it's this whole range here everything else remains the same except we're going to add one more value pair in here so we'll add our semicolon and then we'll do color two and that will be that will be something like this to get the gray the light gray there you can actually find these colors if you go up to the text color up here and then add the custom when you when you move your mouse somewhere across here or, or change this over here you can see the hex value that you want up here so if you wanted a particular green or a particular gray for example then you can just copy this value here and then use that in your sparkline function as we did here and so of course you can play with um, the other colors like we did on the other chart so let's just let's just get rid of that we don't need that let's copy this down now this one is using this range and so what we could do here is just change this to to the yellow color and for example if we was to change this to say four and six then you can get the idea of what that looks like with the two colors there so that's sparkline functions to create the bar chart in Google Sheets. As I say, it is just scratching the surface with sparkline functions, but it is really useful and you can see it's quite clean looking. You know, if you've got some sort of data that you want to showcase in this in this fashion, then it works really well. But um, if you didn't see the, the last video on the chart and repeat, go check that out because that is a really interesting way of, of achieving a similar sort of thing um, to this. It's just a different way of doing it basically. Okay, so that's all for this video. If you liked it, give us a, a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. Until next time, thanks very much, folks.